What is going on everyone? My name's Boyt and I'm back with some more Age of Mythology. The Titans action spawning in the right side of the map in the blue mullet. The blue muller in the blue color playing as Loki. His name is Matrius. His opponent today in the red color playing as Loki as well. His name is Joe. Yes, no matter what happens in this game, it's going to be a 100% win rate for Loki so far in this format. What an exciting time to be alive, ladies and gentlemen. I'm excited. You're excited. First game went the wayside of Matrius there, taking the win against Joe's Gaia, who to thunk it, uh, on, a, on a water map of, uh, of anything here. So that's, that's a thing. Moving on to game number two. Joe can no longer pick Gaia, and Matrius has to pick Loki until he loses with Loki. So we'll see how things are going to uh, eventuate here in this in this very, very high-level 1v1. Uh, both of these players at the top of this game. Joe off the back of a semi of, of a of a final appearance in the competitive mega random tournament, uh, losing eventually to Ulysses. If you haven't checked that out, definitely worth. Uh, going out uh, and checking the, the game out. Uh, and Matrius as well, a fan favorite who unfortunately could not compete in the Mega Random Tournament. Uh, and we're getting some games from him now in this show match series. If you guys enjoyed this show match or this type of show match series, uh, 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 let me know uh, because I want to be doing these every other Sunday. And that'll be something to look forward to in a big way. So we'll see how things are going to go here. We do see that Mattress is starting off just a little bit unfortunately compared to Joe. Both players without starting Hunt, but lots of Hunt around the first circle of their base as we are going to be seeing that Joe has to move over onto Aurox, whereas Mattress moves over onto Caribou, but he's got uh, Aurox on the bottom side, so a little bit further away. So he's going to have to do some Mattress magic to get around this which he definitely can do if he wants to. And basically these villagers could jump over here onto the wood and then he can uh, send all the villagers over onto the Aurox now and be completely fine. Uh, and that's exactly what Matches is doing. He's a very, very smart player. Joe, on the other hand, doesn't really have to adapt all too much to his early game. He's going to be completely fine here. He's going to get a fine advance time, bring his Ulfsark back. No, no Ulfsark back here. We see the temple being dropped on this location as Joe wants to be as aggressive as possible. There is two approaches to this matchup. One is Heimdall All Out Warfare, where you try and get as many Einhiar out as you possibly can with the assistance of Hersa, throwing Axemen. Now, throwing Axemen don't really get a boost from the horn blow of an Einhiar, but they do tank nicely and they do boost your Hursa quite a bit so they can be a big big help in the fights uh, and the other option is obviously to go for full city and try and play a little bit more defensively a little bit more raid orientated the problem with full city is that if you do end up choosing to go for an early uh hall of thanes then you are going to be in a little bit of a problem because you're 300 wood behind your opponent and that ends up amounting to quite a bit of unit deficiencies. So we'll see how this is all going to go as we are seeing a clash of styles here. Joe is going to be hitting the next age first as we continue along. We do have the head of Orpheus in the middle of the map. Both players not scouting all too much here as we've got the Ulfsark going to be scouting around. Obviously, these Auroch are over here on this position with plenty remaining here. Not only that, we've also got uh, some Caribou over here as well that could be eaten and the villagers simply just returning back home for uh, Mattress as he throws up a wall over here and he's going to be in a little bit of problem over here now. Fortunately for Matrius, Joe's built his temple on the wrong side here. Obviously, if he built it over here, he'd be very close to these Aurox. But he built it over here, so he's going to have to make a big, long wait to push onto that position. So we'll see how it's all going to go. The long house getting thrown down here by Joe as uh, he's ready to start pushing in the... the well, we're ready to start creating his forces, I should say. Plenty of resources in the bank. He hasn't been housed just yet. And I love this from Joe. Yes, Joe, this is exactly where your houses should go. Do you want to know why this is where your houses could go? Because your opponent went for Seti, and this is a weakness in your position. If you put houses over here, your opponent can circle around your army, take your houses out, and cause 
significant problems. Uh, putting your houses at home means you're going to be in a much, much better position. We see the walls getting thrown up over here nice and early by uh, Matrius here as well to protect this hunt as best as he can. But the problem here is he is neglected to defend his gold mine, which is just as important. However, there is a gold mine over here that he can jump onto and he can put all of his defenses onto that position. So we'll see if that's what he's going to do, moving all of his villagers away. Joe's going to be really, really happy about this. However, what exactly can he do now? He's going to have to move all the way around and kind of predict that the villagers have moved onto this position. Now, he does see the spied villager over here, which might have given him uh, enough of a clue that the dwarves have moved over onto this gold mine, so he knows that he hasn't gold starved just yet. But what, uh, what he really does know right now is he's got a significant advantage in terms of walking time here and his uh, army advantage. And and also, he has access to undermine. So he can undermine this wall or this wall or this wall over here, get into his opponent's position very, very easily if he so chooses. As now we see Joe making his move in onto this position, going to be taking down this wooden wall as he is attempting to come in into this position. We've got Matrius back over here, retreating back. He's got himself a handful of Hursa over here as the wall does get broken down. As the house is going to get torn down as well. And the Hursa make their way through. Not quite just yet. We see the, the troll getting some damage done over here as he does get a good amount of damage onto the uh, Iron Not only that, this is a great time to be attacking because the Iron Hear's horn and the ex extra damage has been taken out here. And Matrix just moves in, snipes the Iron Hear. He is going straight after this temple, which is a really, really good idea after casting the Undermine onto it. And if he loses the temple, he loses any potential ability to create trolls, which could be a really, really good unit to take out your opponent's uh, to take out your opponent's Iron here with. So we are seeing those throwing Axemen doing some good damage here. Meanwhile, we are still seeing the Dwarves still mining very, very close and hunting very, very close over here as the Temple does get taken down. And Joe going to be retreating down. He does have throwing Axemen coming in straight onto the front. Throwing Axemen over here. Hursa coming over here as well as the house is going to get taken down. A Valkyrie spawn now for Joe is going to be absolutely huge. We're seeing those throwing Axemen getting some good damage done over here as the Hursa do get retreated back. They are still not Hall of Thanes. Uh, Mattress has got tons of resources in the bank right now. He needs to keep rebuilding these houses as Joe is slowly getting further and further in front in this game. Plenty of resources in the bank for both players here. We'll see what's going to happen here if they can get to the uh, Heroic Age in a timely fashion or not as Joe still has not thought to move over onto the uh, onto the gold mine just yet. We are still seeing some nice raids, or not raids here, nice trades I should say, coming through for Joe as Matrius is trying to get as much damage as he possibly can in this fight, but he is getting return damage every single time and the population differential is still very much in favor of Joe here as he's trying to continue fighting this one. Unfortunately for Joe, he doesn't have enough gold just yet to be spending on a uh, Iron here, which he definitely wants to be doing. So he might want to consider uh, stopping Hursa production, making Iron here, stopping Dwarf production, uh, and making villages onto gold or something like that so that he can make some Iron here. here. As the units are retreating back, we do see the medium upgrades has come through for Matrius here as Joe's going to be making his way back around onto this gold mine and checking it out. He still hasn't checked this gold mine out. We see the villagers retreating over into these pine trees in a very, very defensive position here as the dwarves coming back over here. Matrius might consider rewalling this as this is all going on. As we do see the units here are going to start getting uh, targeted down. Matrius reacts incredibly fast there as Joe's not able to uh, prevent Matrius from mining gold, but he is able to prevent this gold from being mined at for the time being here. The other place that Joe could think about going, or Matrius could think about going as well, is this gold mine over here being a little bit further away and a little bit safer, a little bit more risky. And we'll see how this is all going to be doing here as uh, Matrius still, he's actually managed to find himself in a very, very nice position here. Population-wise, very, very equal. This is going to come all down to the Mythian Spawns and the Micro as both players are doing this very, very nicely. We are seeing Matrius' Micro is absolutely out. Seeing misclicks there, unfortunately, though. Comes in going to be hitting as much damage as he possibly can. We do see the Valkyrie in the middle here getting some good damage done. Population differential still in favor. Actually, not in favor of Joe anymore. Actually, in favor of Matrius as Joe is just not able to control his unit as well as Matrius is in this fight. Matrius absolutely carves through Joe's advantage 
making this one a very, very equal uh, playing field, though he does only have four Hursa, so he doesn't have that much of a way to get himself into the Hall of Fame's advantage that he might want here. As he's going to be moving out, and we see the units retreating here. He's going to be taking a lot of damage. Well, Joe's going to be taking a lot of damage here, trying to retreat back. He loses three, four, almost four throwing acts from there for free. As Matrius is going to be super happy about that. Now, we do have to remember that Joe's been having the advantage in terms of gathering. He definitely has a stronger economy than his opponent here. But somehow, some way, Matrius is up 36 to 34. Uh, village account here and Matrius reckons that it's time to get Hall of Thanes. Now he does only have himself a handful of Hursa but one thing you can do is uh, if you can get to the mythic sorry the heroic age you can throw down a market buy food for a little bit make those Hursa that you want uh, and then cast flaming weapons alternatively you can just go uh, into full farms now uh, and just spam Hursa out as we are going to be starting to see them running around the map looking for something to take out. This uh, Hursa here with 13 HP not going to be that much of a worry for for Joe as he's getting himself Eld Hrimna Kettle here as his uh, temple is under attack. We see a handful of throwing axes coming back here to defend this one. Obviously, Joe's going to be wanting those uh, those Einhear out in force to help him win these fights. Uh, but we'll see how that's all going to go in the end of this as the throwing axe are going to be making their way over here. We've got four trolls out for Matrius, and these trolls deal 200% uh, bonus damage against myth units. So uh, these only are about 60% pierce. So these trolls are basically doing, like just just said, it's about six, maybe five damage. So they're doing 15 damage per second onto these iron here, which isn't really that much in the grand scheme of things, but they will be hurting just a little bit. Thank you for the six months. Etinho Casper, I appreciate you, my friend. As Joe's going to be moving back into this position, trying to push in and take these units down. As Matrius has to retreat back as the uh, Herso get thwarted on that position there. We are now seeing Matrius able to start eating his berries on the front here as well. As one troll does get caught out just a little bit here, that's going to be a big win for Joe on this fight as he's trying to push in. We are seeing those trolls able to take down the Valkyrie relatively fast here, but the Iron here are in onto this position, going to be getting that damage done onto these units here as the throwing action are going to be retreating away as they get so much damage done to them by the uh, by the horn of the Eldrimna Iron here. Not only that, I mean, I want to say that these throwing action get a boost but I, I really I've, I've heard they don't I don't know I've heard they don't I haven't tested it myself anyways Joe has to retreat here still not going to be able to push through these trolls now they're hammer trolls to boot and hammer trolls are going to be able to clean up those uh, those throwing axemen very very nicely as the fighting is going to continue and mattress is going to be really really annoying with these hurts so attacking with these hurts is not really what he wants to do they've got 5.72 speed here uh, which means they don't get hit by the throwing axemen nice micro from both players they're sniping down straight throwing axemen doing as much hit and run as they possibly can we are seeing a little bit of walling over here just as a retreat path for the gold villagers as the Hursa are going to be returning back onto this location trying to take something out here as Joe's now throwing down all the farms that he possibly can as we see another longhouse getting put onto this position here as the unit's coming in onto this position. It looks like Joe's army is a little bit stronger than Mattress's at this point. He's got himself four iron here, here which is going to be a really, really big help. Not only that, getting some raiding cavalry out. These are kind of distraction raiding cavalry as it were. As the units are going to be retreating back to their base. We see the longhouse coming up over here as well. As the throwing axe are coming to get some good damage done. The Hursa on the back and I'll attempt to surround this position just a little bit. We'll snipe down one throwing axe on the back here. As the units try and push through the Hursa, pretty much all getting taken down very fast. We see our Iron here spawn now for Matrius, though, which is going to be a really, really big help for those Hursa. But the Hursa aren't really doing all too much here. As the Iron here still pushing through, we see a Valkyrie spawn for Joe. Not exactly what he wants, but not going to be too upset with that one as the trolls are all falling here. And Joe seemingly able to push through Matrius' army. Matrius has got 1100 gold just classic uh loki macro here uh as he just can't spend that one really but joe gets a really really big win there against matches he's going to be taking down these units nicely the question is how can he continue
continue to apply this advantage that he's managed to get and and create a bigger advantage as it seems to me like Matrius just did a little bit of a throw here but Matrius is now going to be able to click up through Bragi and we'll see will he be able to get there or not or will we be seeing something a kind of counter action happening that we saw in the last game where the town center gets torn down before the heroic age or mythic age comes through now we're going to be seeing the houses getting taken down as the trolls come through to try and defend this one remember those trolls do get a little bit extra damage against the Einhiar so you do have to be a little bit careful with them as we do see one Einhiar falling a second one going to be falling as well as those trolls are doing a very very nice job from afar here we're still seeing more throwing action coming in as Joe says I do not care I am going after you I'm going to take your trolls down I'm going to take your base down and you're going to be in a lot of pain here as Joe's got no resources in the bank right now he is going full send full uh, production of units pushing in here we do see this Valkyrie that is a very important unit they're getting taken out by a stray hearse it's not what you want to see for Matrius here is this troll does not quite go down very very close to falling but will be able to heal himself back up by throwing stones one of the little known facts about uh trolls is they can heal themselves uh when they when they shoot their when they shoot their their stones uh, as we see there's the Bragi coming through as the battle ball are going to start coming in for Matrius that's absolutely huge here as uh, basically throwing axemen really, really bad against Battle Ball. And now Joe has to figure out how he's going to be able to get to the next stage. He's got himself all the farms getting thrown down over here. He's got himself his, uh, his ox cart over here, helping out the walking time as well. Uh, and we are seeing still a little bit of skirmishing going on, but Match is definitely having uh, the last laugh here right now as he's managed to get to the heroic age after all is said and done. Doesn't quite have the favor he would like to have to produce the battle boards because he's got tons of gold but he can throw down a market he can buy food if he wants to but he doesn't need to he can easily get up to full population in her so here and create uh real chaos for joe's army as joe's going to be moving in here trying to pick off these uh these units as best as he can he does have a handful of her so out ready to try and take down these battle board but he's still not quite ready to take this fight we see uh, old start coming into the fray for some reason here as these Throwing Axe, we're going to be doing some good damage here. The Battle Board does start getting taken out. We're seeing some good micro from Matrius yet again. Going to be focused firing these Hursa down as best as he possibly can. We see a Troll Spawn through for Joe, which is going to be a really, really big help as the Battle Board getting taken down as fast as it possibly can here. As the Hursa come through trying to take down this Battle Board as well, not quite able to do so as it seems like Joe's army, while he's still got a population advantage, he just doesn't quite have the production here to make the Hursa he needs to take out these Battle Ball. However, Matrix is going to be retreating back. He does have this healing spring to heal everything up, uh, but Joe can pick, pick off a couple of these farmers here as they are very far away from the town center. We are seeing some Hursa coming over here, going to be attempting to take down these dwarves. Matrius uh, being very, very cheeky. He gets a Valkyrie spawn. That's absolutely huge. The dwarves will be able to finish off this Hursa, but that Valkyrie is going to be an absolute menace for Joe to deal with. He does have a gold mine up on the top side of the map, though, so he can just bring these dwarves back home and be kind of fine for the time being, but he definitely wants to be gathering here. Uh, one way forward for Matrius would easily be to just get to the Mythic Age here. If he gets to the Mythic Age, he gets the Fire Giant and also, more importantly, the Nidhogg to clean up all this army. But right now, Matrius is just realizing he has to take it slow. He'll be running out of this home gold mine fairly soon here as the village is over on this gold mine now in the bottom corner. Maybe Joe doesn't know about that. As we see the, uh, as we see the Battle Boar actually able to get sniped down there very, very quickly. We've got a hand... A, a, a lot of Hursa here for Joe as he is happily staying in this classical age. He's actually almost ready to advance. Does he have an armory? Answer is yes. How are the armory upgrades actually looking here? No upgrades for Joe and Matrius on the other hand. He's got himself copper weapons, which I think is a bit of a mistake in this matchup. Copper mail makes it the most sense. Every single one of uh, Joe's units is dealing hack damage. So you're going to be able to survive and potentially do a lot more damage from that there. As now, Joe's just waiting on his uh, remainder of this gold over here. Does he have himself shaft mine? No shaft mine. Could definitely think about getting that. Able to advance uh, just now here as the Valkyrie gets pushed back just a little bit. Village is back onto the gold mine. Joe's advancing now through Bragi, one would assume. 
And Matrius is still looking for something to do here. Is Herso uh, going to be moving across the map? The Valkyrie moving back over here. Still no attempt at defending this position here. Uh, as soon as you see those Herso leaving the base, you just go off to the town center, right? There's no trolls remaining. And Matrius has turned down his market, but there's no units left in the base. So as soon as you see eight Herso over on your villages, you just have to accept that they're there and kill the town center. That seems to be the only real way forward here. We're seeing Copper Mail coming through now for, uh, for Joe as he's continuing to take down these houses. As the Herso come over here, the Valkyrie has been taken down. These villages under a lot of pain here, but funnily enough, this actually gives some population space for Mithunet spawns. So we'll see if that's going to matter or not, as Matrius is not going to be able to get any. The Ox Guard does get taken out, which funnily enough might allow these villages to come back. Meanwhile, we see these units sticking in the main base of uh, Matrius here as we see flaming weapons getting cast onto this position to help those Ursa take down all these villages so much faster as the Ursa are able to continue taking these down. The villagers finally retreating back. We see a town center getting grabbed by Matrius as well as Joe has to retreat and that raid might just be it as Joe's got tons of resources in the bank here. Will immediately cast himself flaming weapons but is it going to be enough as we now start to see the towers getting taken out, which means in turn, villages on farms in the main base for Joe are going to be going down. And Matrius is playing this nicely. He retreats just a little bit. He's got a handful of units remaining to get some good damage done. Joe's still not getting the Mithuna spawns that he might like here. Do we see a marker getting thrown up anywhere? No, we're getting more battle ball getting produced over onto this position. The dwarves over here are going to start getting taken down as well. This is still a flaming weapons hersa. These guys are doing 19.2 damage per second and we see a mountain giant spawn here as well. This is an absolute nightmare for Joe in this matchup as Matrius looks like he's going to be pulling away with this one. Heavy infantry coming through for Joe as well. We'll see if that's going to be enough. He's still sitting at 93 of 115 population, but he's got no gold in the bank. The village is retreating back for Joe. He's got so many idle villages now. So many have been picked off. And not only that, the second town center for Matrius is going to be coming up very, very soon to boot. We've got fortified town centers through for Matrius as well as he is trying to get good damage done onto Matrius' economy, but Matrius has got 55 villages. Joe's got 35. This is absolutely terrifying position for Joe to be in as he just doesn't have a way through here. His villager fighting to the best of his ability to take down these Hursa, which is definitely uh, a way forward. Uh, a troll spawn comes. There are some uh, some Hursa and battle balls that can come over here and deal with this. Uh, but And we are also seeing now Matri is going to be attempting to villager fight just a little bit here as Joe has to retreat back. He's going to be sending his villagers onto the, uh, onto the gold as soon as he can. Uh, definitely needs as much of that as he possibly can. But right now, Joe's at 58 of 150 population and Matrius is at 99 of 140 population with a significant advantage here as Joe retreats back. And where to now for Joe? Obviously, everyone onto gold makes a lot of sense. There's no gold over here anymore. The villagers have mostly jumped back onto the farms when he is in desperate need of gold. And Matrius is just going to motor ahead. He's got this town center. He's not producing any villages from it. Doesn't really need to. He's still at 58, 60 villages. Plenty enough if he just wants to spam army up to 140 population to feel good about that. And in that moment, Joe does decide the game is lost. That raid from Matrius was absolutely bonkers. Had Joe been able to defend this some way, maybe a wall over here, maybe a, a hill fort, maybe some units, something back here to defend this gold mine. This game was in the balance and Joe was making the Heimdall work here in a really, really big way. But Madri is too strong, too smart, too solid in this game. He's actually managed to win two games now with his Loki and Joe is down two losses, which means Joe's only got left Greek and Egyptian to take out Matrius's remaining gods. It's going to be a mountain to climb for Joe. We'll see if he's going to be able to do it. If you guys are enjoying these games, please consider hitting the follow on the Twitch. If you're on the YouTube, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys in the next game.